hit it, start string. Why is it not funny? Is it bunky? Yeah, you know, you did it. Is it live? Oh, it's it's already live. It should be coming out on our thing. Thank you so much. So it must be working then, okay. Yes, it's on here, man. Okay. Thank you. We'll begin with another prayer quickly. Holy Spirit, come down through me and make me give a good offering for your word. Make it easy to understand and may it spread throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, so, the title today is The Thorn in Your Flesh, or The Problem in Your Life. Now, there's a certain situation where people will be upset that God hasn't got rid of something in their life, something that's bothering them. You're in a bad situation, you're in a bad, something wrong with your health, there's something... And God won't get rid of it. And you're saying, why God? Why, 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 why won't you get rid of it? So, we'll go here. Now, when you watch these films about soldiers, you can't just, when you see a soldier, you can't just give him a gun and just go, that's it. He doesn't know how to use the gun. He doesn't know how to fight. In the middle of combat, they will get massacred. But if you train your troops, if you teach them, which is what Jesus was doing with the apostles, teaching them, certain situations had to happen so that the apostles learn what to do. When Jesus was attacked by certain people, he would answer them in a certain way. Why? So that the apostles would see how they did it, how we would read it. And we would act the same way. We are Christians. We follow Christ. Christians was a, a word made up by the Romans. It was supposed to mock us. <laughs> it did the exact opposite. We've spread around the world. Okay, so Jesus is saying to them, okay, when I sent you out without a purse and a scrip, a scrip is a bag, like a satchel that you've got with you, and shoes. Did you lack anything? They said nothing. But Jesus says to them, Things are about to change. He said to them, But now, he that has a purse, let him take it. Likewise the scrip, and he that has... There's a problem with a mouse, wrong with it. Someone with nails pulled it out. I will not have the service interrupted. <laughs> we pray that God protect us from it. Okay? So. It's not here. There's no battery there. Morning, my brother. How are you? Okay. Have a water, my brother. Sit down. Okay. So he says, But he that has a person, take it. He that has no sword, get ready, because things are going to get rough. Let him sell his garment, what he's wearing. No, don't need that. I don't want one. <laughs> Let him sell his garment, what he's wearing, and get ready for that. Okay. Tony, look after the things. Thanks. Okay. 
So, things are about to change for you. Things are about to change for Christians. You're going to get ready. It's going to get a little bit rough. Now, was the sword to attack people? No. The sword was to defend yourselves. So let's go to the next one. Now, the reason we have different Gospels is because these four people, these four people that recorded this, recorded slight details that the other one missed out. Only here do you see who the apostle was that cut off the soldier's ear. Okay? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. It even tells you the name. Only John records this. Okay? And Jesus said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Does Jesus want anyone want you to kill anyone or harm anyone no the Bible says all manner of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven you does that mean you've got to kill someone for blasphemy no Jesus doesn't want people attacking people for him for his name you dirty his name now in the old days people would kill in the name of Jesus uh, God wants us to conquer this country no he doesn't He's just saying that. These leaders always say that God's with them and God has told them and God has... It's not true. This is the Bible. This is what we follow. Jesus doesn't want you to attack anyone, especially not in his name. Suffer ye, he says. Allow them. Let these things happen. They're going to take me prisoner. Let it happen. Let's go to the next one. Now, Jesus knowing their thoughts... So does Jesus know what people are thinking? And he, the evil in their hearts. Jesus knows about these people. Okay? So, knowing their thoughts. Okay. Knowing their thoughts said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Okay? Go to the next one, please. Now, Peter is, you've got to understand, if Peter has attacked someone, he's not a coward, Peter. He's not scared to attack. He's not a scaredy cat. To attack someone with a sword, it, you know, it means, you know, you're not scared at all. He's not afraid. But something happens. Jesus says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. He says, Satan wants to take you. But Jesus isn't worried about Satan. He's cast Satan out many times. Who cares? He's worried about Peter. When you're converted, you're not a proper Christian yet, Peter. When you become a proper Christian, strengthen your brethren. The rest of the apostles are going to need you. So I need you to be a good, strong Christian, he's saying. Okay, get ready. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Is he ready? No. He's not ready. This is before the betrayal. Now, Jesus knows that uh, Peter's going to be too scared and deny him. Jesus knows this. But he still picks Peter. To strengthen the other disciples. Now, he knows his heart. Maybe, how do I put it in a different way? Maybe somebody has said something to you, okay? He said something horrible. Or did something horrible, but he didn't mean to do it. Okay? What, what can we do in this situation? But you know that person's not a bad person. You know that they were uh, just having a bad day. Or they just fell away for that time. Has someone ever said anything nasty to you? Someone you love. They've said something nasty. Done something nasty. But you know in their heart they're not bad. They just need a little bit more training. They just need a little bit more. And this is what's happening with the apostle. You're not ready yet Peter. But you will be. Let's go to the next bit. Okay. So, 
This is supposed to be an error in the Bible. Okay? Atheists take this. This is an error. You see, the Bible's all wrong. Does it, do any of you believe it's an error? No, I didn't think you did. Okay, we're going to go through it today so that you know. Okay? He said to him, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day. I'll explain what that means after. Before thou shalt thrice deny me. So if all the Gospels say three times he's going to deny, then the morning cock crows. Okay? Jesus said to him, Very I say to thee, this day, you know, before the cock crows twice, twice is added in the Gospel of Mark. Only the Gospel of Mark. All the other Gospels say this. It won't crow at all. Mark says it won't crow twice. Is there an error in the Bible here? Let's look into it. <laughs> Let's look into it. Okay. This is actually an amazing animal. <laughs> You're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. This is better than a watch. It's a miraculous creation by God. Why? You can take this thing to another country and it will always crow two hours before sunrise. The scientists were so fascinated they wanted to know why. Turns out that they have an internal clock. They don't know when daylight is going to be. Nobody sitting here knows what time the sun's going to rise tomorrow, right? These things do. By some miracle, okay? So it's a 24 hour alarm clock, okay? So that's the reason Jesus told this an uh, chose this animal, okay? It's better than any watch you can buy. A watch cannot do what this thing can do. Let's go to the next one. Okay? Also, approximately two hours before sunrise, at intervals of 30 minutes. The cock crows once. Now the stopwatch starts. You have one hour to half an hour to betray me three times. It's an amazing prediction by Jesus. Okay? And I'm very sad for doing this, but this is the type of guy I am. I have to know, okay? It decreased about seven minutes at the time of sunrise, okay? Anticipatory pre-dawn crowing, even in the absence of light. They've put these things in the dark, and it still works. They know when the sun's going to rise, okay? So he's saying, this day you're going to betray me two hours before three times and it's an amazing prediction let's see what happens okay now there's a difference between a cock crow and a rooster jesus said the cock will crow the big one the oldest male has to crow first if the second one doesn't do what he's told he gets beaten up this is fascinating things. So, I crow first. If you dare to crow before I do, okay, it's the rules. Rules is the rules. This is how these creatures are, okay? Two cock crows. After that, the rooster, okay, if you crow out of turn, you'll be firmly put in your place. That means beaten up. Let's go to the next one. And remember how it's written, okay? Neither of these is actually wrong. The morning crow, they crow all the time. If they see something, they'll crow and warn people. Or they'll crow to get people up to start looking for food. In this situation, he says, before it crows twice, within the space of one hour. Watch. Go to the next one. Okay. So, Peter again does something very brave. If you have any questions about this, ask me afterwards, If I've, because it's a little bit... Okay. When they kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, were sat down together, Peter sat up down amongst them. Now, they want to kill the apostles. <laughs> and Peter just walks in and sits down with them. Very, very brave. Very, very gutsy. Peter is not a coward. But, like you... If you apply a little bit of pressure, sometimes we fail. The object is when things go bad in your life or you feel scared that you don't fail God. 
you stay true. Let's see what happens. So the woman says, okay, a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, earnestly looked on him. So she's really looking at him. I know you, you're one of Jesus's followers, okay? She's earnestly looking at him. This man was also with him. Go to the next one. First denial, number one, okay? And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also them. He said, Man, I am not. So he looks like Peter was the first guy to go, Hey, man, or man, you know, I am not. So we see it. Go to the next one. There we have it. The answer is always in the Bible. About the space of one hour after another. Confidently affirm saying this was also with him for he is a Galilean. They have a certain accent. You know, uh, and Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. Immediately, while he spake, the cock crew. Now, you cannot get this right without a miracle. You don't have a remote control to make the cock crow. It's impossible unless a miracle comes by God. I cannot, nobody can predict this. You could get the best scientist on the planet couldn't tell you that someone's going to betray you exactly two hours before <laughs> and within one hour he's going to do this. So I'm glad it was in there and it came up. Okay, Right, let's go to the next one. Now, the whole point of all that wasn't to teach you about chickens. It was about this. Okay. <laughs> The Lord turned upon and looked upon Peter. So, how do you feel inside you when you betray Jesus? When you deny him? That's, have you ever had that dirty, disgusting feeling that I should have said this, I should have done that, I wish I hadn't have done that? A horrible, horrible feeling. I don't want anyone in this planet, on this planet, to ever feel that way, the way Peter feels now. But, I have some good news for you. He was meant to mess up. He needed training. Just like us. Sometimes you, you, you regret the mistakes. I made a terrible mistake. How do you know that that wasn't for the best? How do you know that that wasn't what was supposed to happen? How do you know? We don't. You see, sometimes we can beat ourselves up. You know, I oh, did this terrible, but it doesn't work like that. Because it's part of your training. The same way this is part of Peter's training. After this, he did the exact opposite. He, would, he wouldn't back down. He took beatings, he was arrested, everything. He would not back down ever again after this. Now notice, they applied a little bit of pressure. She looked at him the first time. The same as what will happen with you. A little bit of pressure will try and make you turn against God. If you're in school, I remember when, when I was in school, almost everyone was on drugs and smoking. I remember it was a Catholic school. <laughs> I went to a Catholic school. <laughs> it was a, right? But I couldn't, I, I never got involved. But the pressure the pressure you would not believe. I thought Catholic school, you know, it's got to be a goody, goody, two shoes place. No. A little bit of pressure is applied. Why don't you try this? Why don't you join us with this? Why don't you get involved with this? A little bit more pressure. Oh, you know, everyone's doing it. Maybe you, uh, your friends start and then Satan puts your mother up to it. Maybe Satan puts someone else up to it, your people at work. Suddenly, a little bit of pressure from all sides makes you buckle, makes you turn your back on Jesus for a bit. But don't, because when that time comes, you'll regret it. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Now, for the problems in your own life, and I know you've got problems, and sometimes you pray and they don't go away, how are we going to deal with that? Let me tell you. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Okay? What is Paul trying to say? I want glory for myself? No. What he's saying is, 
seeing that all these priests, fake priests, all these people that you let in your life, they take glory for themselves. Oh, I'm going to glory as well, he says. For you suffer fools gladly, seeing your, ye yourselves are wise. If you're so clever, why do you let people treat you badly? Why do you not see the people in your life that treat you badly? How many times have been out, uh, someone been in a relationship and that relationship's turned bad and you've afterwards, three months later, you think, how could I have let them treat me like that? It happens, right? You'd never see it at the time. Never. Afterwards, you think, what did I do? <laughs> okay, this is what's happening here. You suffer fools gladly. He, he's having a go at the Corinthians. Let's go to the next one. You suffer men to bring you into bondage. Okay, they, they restrain you, they constrict you. Sometimes it can happen at churches, okay? They will rope you in to uh, do something for them. Come on, it's uh, tomorrow you have to see us, and the day after that you have to see us, and the day after that, and the day after that. We've got all these things planned for you. Wait a minute. You're putting me in bondage. <laughs> I just wanted to come to church. You can't leave this church. I was in... <laughs> I was in a place where they said that to me. You can't leave this church. That's called church hopping. What? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's not in the Bible. Okay. Okay. If a man devour you, he takes all your stuff. Why do you let people do that? Why do we let religious people... Or people that think they're religious, but they're actually fools, take take control of us and manipulate us. These are the reasons for the cults. These are the reasons why Jesus had to come and stop the Pharisees. One of the greatest temples of all time. You know the best Solomon's temple. Absolutely amazing. The best place to go to church, and it's only over here. But the people never wanted to go over there. They wanted to hear the truth, so they were going to the desert to listen to Jesus. A horrible place. No food, drinks, not nice, no shade from the sun. But that's what a real church, to hear real preaching, that's the way it is. Okay? Why do you let these people devour you? If a man take of you, yeah? Man takes your money. You know, oh, you must donate this and you must donate that. Well, Tiger, you know, you donate it yourself, get a job. If any man exalt himself, I am senior pastor, you know, do me a favour, you're nobody. People have to recognise this. Why do people let themselves get used? Why do people do that? It's not a church. If that place is doing that, it's not Jesus. So this is what we need to look out for here, Okay. If any man smite you on the face. So back then, they were, actually hitting, they were actually hitting the members of the congregation. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine what was going on. I, I, I can't. Is this, in Nigeria, does this ever happen? Do the pastors have big cars? And Yes. Oh dear. Very big cars, you say. Ah. Who pays for that? The people, right? Yeah, I thought so. Do people serve this pastor in Nigeria? Do they do everything for him? Clean his house, clean his car? You know, yes. That's right, isn't it? I know because I've got a lot of friends from Nigeria. Okay? And I know what goes on over there. But there's also a very good guy from Nigeria. In Russia. He went to Russia. One of the most famous guys, uh, Baptist pastors on the planet. He's Nigerian. Did you know that? And he has something like 7,000 people at the church. <laughs> okay. He preaches the exact opposite of what these people are doing. That there is no bondage. There is no bondage. There's no reason for you to serve a pastor. He's just a guy. He's supposed to serve you. Okay. 
That's the reason. That's real Christianity, okay? And he knew. Please tell me this doesn't happen in Nigeria. Does, it, does anyone actually get hit? No. Oh, oh phew. <laughs> I can imagine it happens. But you could be smited in different ways. Maybe the guy insults you a lot. That's smiting as well in the Bible. Anyway, are they ministers of Christ? Are speakers of fool? <laughs> They're not ministers of Christ, okay? <laughs> okay. I am more, he says. I am more. In labours more. I work harder than these people. Uh, in labours more abundant. Stripes above measure. He was beaten up a lot. Stripes is when you get whipped with hooks and stuff like that. This is what he was suffering for Christ. Now, people will say, why did God let this happen? Hold on a minute. Sometimes people have to suffer for Christ. That's a horrible thing. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to suffer at all. I want my life to be rainbows and puppy dogs. But that's not reality. And that's not Christianity. I don't respect a pastor who doesn't have any problems. I know a pastor who's got a special child. Big burden. Fantastic. I trust that guy because that means God's put a burden on his life. And he will come through. And that person's wife, that very good pastor's wife, she ministers to other special needs kids. So good came out of this thing. Okay? Okay, uh, prisoners more frequent. They're on the radio. She's also on the radio, yeah. Good. Amazing people. Okay, in prisons more frequent, because he was always in prison. That's why we've got a lot of letters for Paul, because he was always in prison writing them. Okay? He thought, while I'm in prison, I'm not going to stop doing my Christianity, you know? Okay? In deaths often. So, it's not about the money, the power, the cars, the women and stuff like that. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. It's real Christianity we're looking for. Okay. For though I would desire to glory, you know, if you're going to give glory to these guys, I'm going to tell you, you know, I would desire that as well. I will not be a fool. Because these people are fools. The Bible says so. Okay. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, I hold back. Lest any man should think of me. What he's saying is that I would, I would rather say the truth about myself. He's trying to say in a nice way, I am the real thing, Paul's saying. These guys are fake. You want to glory? Glory me. Even though I don't want that because I'm not a fool. Okay? I'll forbear. I'll hold back. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Or that he heareth of me. Now he's an old man now, at this point. Beatings, imprisonments, 14 years of... Uh, you're talking a lot of time <laughs> to be going through this. So, is it a bad thing if we also suffer a little bit for Christ? Sometimes we, we need a problem or two in our life so that people see us and they don't see... How do I say it? Have you ever seen that Joel Fakestein guy? He's got the smart... He makes all these Christian books. Yeah. No pictures of the cross on the books. Pictures of him. No, yeah. No, no cross anywhere. No mention of Jesus. Nothing about Jesus' sacrifice. Nothing about repentance. Just nice, goody stuff so that you buy my books. Okay? Let's go to the next one. I don't want to be thought of above what it is, okay? So, to make this happen, how does God make this happen in my life? How does he keep me in a way that people don't think of me as a saint? As a, uh, he's a saint, but I mean, uh, how, do, how do they look at me so that they don't start worshipping me? Because when he got off the boat once and the snake bit him, a poisonous snake, and he lived, the people thought he was a god. And he was trying to calm them down. He doesn't want that. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of my revelations. Okay? Now this, you're going to hear it from lots of people. They're going to try and explain to you what the thorn in the flesh is. 
but we're going to show it show it to you today so that you, they, they can't you know there was given to me a thorn in the flesh a problem the messenger of satan to buffet me buffet means to strike hit lest i should be exalted above measure okay for this thing i besought the lord thrice that it might depart from me it might depart from me the messenger of satan okay someone says that's because he had bad eyesight no bad eyesight is not a messenger of satan is it okay you're good yeah basically he was attacked continually spiritually by this messenger of satan this is what it's saying there uh okay uh can you go back one sorry okay so in your life is there a thorn in the flesh maybe some injustice why hasn't God done something about it? Why? Because you need a bit more training like Peter did. You need to take that situation that's happened to you and turn it into something good. I was beaten up once, then I went and learned, you know, martial arts and then, but, you know, whatever that person's story is. Now I teach children to defend themselves. He turned something bad into something good. Oh, this guy was taking drugs. Now he has a drug rehab center and gets people. These things. You can turn something bad that happened to you into something good. You turn it around. You can glory in that infirmity. Let's go to the next one. Okay. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. The fact that I'm God <laughs> and I'm in your life and you know the gospel is sufficient for you. The fact that you're saved and you're going to go to heaven is enough for you okay my strength god's strength is made perfect in weakness now we've seen people we do moan about our problems i mean i, I moan about my problems sometimes but there's a guy with no arms and no legs who's a christian and he speaks to people about christianity and how god's changed his life and stuff like that and we look at that guy and his strength is made perfect in weakness surely that should have broken him surely satan should have got hold of him by now depression anger all these things satan's weapons but it's not true he's what he's married with three children yes doing better than me beautiful wife as well Is there anything that God can't do? I don't think so. From what I've just heard. I was trying to wow you. You've just wowed me. Doesn't work like that, does it? It doesn't work the way Satan wants it to work. He wants the weakness in your life to destroy you. You turn that around and you stay loyal to Jesus. And you see the blessings from God. And even if you didn't see the blessings from God, you're righteous for fighting against that evil that's trying to take you over. Many people fall to depression. I know people that have suffered horrifically in their life. And I know people that have suffered a little bit, but they're always depressed. Depressed, depressed, depressed. When you call them, how are you doing? <laughs> you can't take no more. <laughs> I am alive by the grace of God. I am blessed by the grace of God. Right. That's the attitude. The next time someone asks you how you are, I am blessed by the grace of God. I am happy. I'm alive. I've got my friend over there, Abdul. Yeah. I've got friends. I've got my brothers. I've got you guys. Are you happy? Well, yes, I am. And that's the way it is sometimes. Sometimes uh, you reverse it on Satan and you spit in his face. <laughs> That's how it works, okay? Now, uh, where was I? That's it. So, my strength's made perfect in weakness. If I've got a different way of doing it, yeah? It's not like the films you'll see, you know, uh, I've got a big problem, so I'll grab a big machine gun and everyone dies. 
That's not showing God's strength. That's showing your own. This is it. Most gladly, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. That's what I want. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities. If this is a problem, infirm means to be old, weak, you know, uh, I take pleasure in it, he says. Why? Because it helps Jesus. In some way, my sickness, my weakness, helps Jesus. If people see that I'm ill in that way, if some guy is recovering from drugs and he goes to a drug clinic, I've never tried drugs, so I don't know what it was like, you know, but just, just say there was, okay? And he goes to that clinic. Maybe all those people need to be saved. Maybe someone was doing some satanic Ouija board stuff and they turn their life around and pull other people out of it. You glory in your infirmities. Don't worry about the stuff you've done wrong. Maybe there was a reason for it. Let's go to the next one. For when I am weak, then I am strong for Jesus. Okay. Ah, I see it goes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, we need to go back to the thorn in the flesh thing and then we're finished there. Okay. So. To cap, to summarize, okay? If a problem comes to you now, when you leave this church, instead of it depressing you or getting you down flip it glory to god i remember uh, uh, when i was in hospital i was very very sick i was gonna die and i took my drip <laughs> a little drip to my arm okay and i took it into the church that was there i started praying thanking god i didn't ask him to heal me by the way i never asked god to heal me I just went to the church and gave thanks. And f I wanted forgiveness as well. Did it work? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So, we're going to be that same way, okay? This thorn in the flesh is something that's going to happen in your life. If it's the messenger of Satan, if it's an attack, spiritual attack in those ways, don't worry about it. If you're having terrible dreams, I woke up, how many of you have had a dream that is so bad you wake up like this? It can happen. Don't worry about it. Trust in God. Amen. If your wife leaves you, trust in God. If things are not going quite as you planned with your car and it keeps breaking down, trust in God. I remember my car didn't work for two days. And I didn't know what to do. I had to go somewhere. I walked outside, I prayed. Put their key in and it started <laughs> as if nothing was wrong. There isn't, pray for small things. There's nothing wrong with praying for small things. Pray for big things. But pray, talk to God first. Never get depressed about anything. Now, for those that are watching uh, on the video, I'll take it to the end. Thank you for watching and uh, contact us if you have any questions on the, on the board. Uh, actually, put that last slide up. If, if, sorry, Maria. Can you put that last slide up? Uh, just in case somebody here doesn't have my number or my email, uh, you can give it to someone else, okay? We have an open door here, so everyone's welcome to the church. Let's pray. My God in heaven, I pray today to strengthen every person in this room, every single Christian, every single person on the planet, that when problems come, they do the exact opposite of what Satan wants. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the strength that will flow through them, through knowing you, it keeps them strong. I pray that nobody ever de deny you. I pray that people get over their mistakes and realize those mistakes were better for them. They shaped their lives, they trained them. 
for the next situation. I pray people accept this and that no depression ever come upon anyone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Try and get that. Get it on the screen. Yes. blessings that you give us and to our families and to the church we we thank you for the message of today lord it was clear and let us remember this message in our hearts in our minds that no problem no worry will bother us because we know we have you on our side we pray lord for your blessings for everyone here for our families for our families abroad and we thank you always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. God bless. <laughs>